Mr. Mr. Floyd, would you hit that record button? Is it on? Did I hit it? Good evening, Ms. McLean. Great. Okay. I'll get it, bro. Oh, thanks for reminding me. Did Miss uh, Morgan on? Okay, here we go. Oh. out of my office. The waste management guy is in my office. I'm just going to get him out. Okay, you guys ready? <laughs> Greetings. Legal notice was hereby given of this regular meeting of the mayor and board of all the persons this Thursday, October 8th, uh, 2020 at 6 p.m. in the courtroom at City Hall. This is our call to order. We're going to ask everyone to stand. I'm going to ask uh, uh, Finance Committee Chair Councilman Shaw to lead us in prayer after a moment of silence. And I'm asking Mayor Pro Tem, Councilman Larry Prater, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Robert. Let's have a moment of silence, please. Mm -hmm. Lord, 
we just uh, come to you tonight just uh, thanking you for loving us and caring for us. And it's with all that we have going uh, across the whole country, we just lift up our country, our leaders. And Lord, just uh, we just thank you for the local folks and also our state that's going being battered again with, with, the, with the storm. Lord, we just pray that you protect us from all this that's coming. Lord, uh, just be with us tonight as we have our meeting. Hope we'll get things done that improve the city of Bastion. Amen. In our parish. And Lord, we just thank you for all you did for us in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Salute, pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ms. Goldman, can you give us a roll call, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Shaw? Here. Mr. Prater? Here. Mr. Lott? Here. Mayor? We have a Councilman Moore and Councilman Green absent, but we do have a quorum. We have a quorum. This meeting is now in session. Announcements. Um, we have the uh, Morehouse Innovation and Technology Alliance, fourth annual Shimani Hall State Park, uh, this Saturday, I mean, Saturday the 17th. And uh, let's remember that we have. Do, does any of the councilmen have any announcements? We're not going to recognize Duncan Jones in this passing. Yes, we are. Yes, sir. Uh, I wanted to do that after we do some. Uh, we have uh, we have FEMA related. Uh, announcements to make uh, we've been making progress and uh, we've been making a lot of progress working with James Modest of the uh, Morehouse Parish Sheriff's Department and Chef Tubbs and uh, and Mr. Uh, Terry Matthews president of our of our um, Police jury. I'm going to save this when we talk about the, the burn unit, the uh, DEQ stuff. Um, the Martin Luther King Street Bridge is progressing. They've torn down all the, you know, torn down the bridge and torn down all the, the pilings and everything like that. And it's, uh, we expect that to be back online shortly. I want to thank this council for agreeing to, uh, to, to go that route rather than rep spending a quarter of a million dollars repairing an old bridge. So I know we've taken a lot of heat uh, for that decision, but it's, it's gonna last 100 years, <clears throat> the new steel and concrete bridge. Uh, public, oh, well, let's, uh, Mr. Prater, came to the office the other day and we were talking about Duncan Jones. Duncan served as our, as one of our city attorneys here and he passed away. And uh, the reason that I selected Duncan to bring before you gentlemen is because um, he was empathetic. He had gone through experiences in life and he could have empathy uh, toward helping people. And while he was here, I feel he did a lot of good and we mourn his passing along with uh, Mr. Jerry Jones and his wife, Shelly, and, and their daughter. And uh, Larry, you got anything you want to say? I just want to say he was, I pretty much was raised with him. Jerry pretty much raised me from junior high too. And he was like a little brother to me. And I, I called and let Jerry know how I felt to yeah. express sympathy from the city and everything. You know, he's a nice kid. He was. Just like everybody else he went through, it wasn't perfect. Right. So, Absolutely. Look at the bad, look at the good. And there was a lot of good there. Lot of good yeah. 
Uh, Duncan was one of the most compassionate people. Uh, I used to pick Duncan up, and uh, he'd spend, spend afternoons with me uh, tutoring. And uh, one day, I asked him what did he want to be when he grew up, and he told me. Then he asked me what I wanted to be. Uh, what would I do if I could do anything? I said, I'd go back and get me a PhD. And he said, why don't you? And I said, let's, let's just eat the ice cream, son. Just eat the ice cream. Um, but we do. Uh, we are remorseful. Um, are there any public comments as they relate to items on the agenda? No, go ahead. Uh, oh, okay. okay. We're sorry. We're trying to get our act together. Yeah. Can you state, <laughs> can you state your name, Ms. Dorothy? I'm Dorothy Ford with the Chamber of Commerce. And? C.C. Hendricks with DNA Sporting Goods. Okay. We're here to discuss an item. I think it's number eight. eight. Number eight. And Cindy's going to speak in order to save time for us here. Yes. Is, is it appropriate if I take this off while I talk? Do I have to um, not really. I think you're in too close proximity. If you can just loosen it a little bit. Okay. It when may... you see me do this, I got to take a breath. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I don't want to pass out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I wanted to get this a little bit more together than what I have it. So I'm going to really speak a lot from my heart in what's going on. This is the third time that we have been here on the subject of paying the fireman. And the first thing I want to do is I want to, get, I haven't been able to actually see them to congratulate them on their number one rating that they had. And we as business people, we just are really proud of our fire department. I mean, and I don't know. Yeah. I'll give you a hand. <clears throat> and it's because of the leadership that they have. They were determined that they were going to make a number one rating, and they did. They pressed on no matter what was going on. And that is what I'm hoping that y'all will do in order to pay them, is that you will take leadership position in order to get them paid. We came last year when it was first brought up, and we explained to you about millage and about businesses. And um, I was, we spoke to you about <coughs> we have, like I think it's a, our millage that we already have is like 50, over 57 mills. Mm -hmm. In Monroe City, it's only 27. That is hard just on economic development. And I do want to ask you, in making decisions of what you want to do in like adding more millage to that, do you even get a committee and talk to business owners, property owners, Kay King, to come up with a solution of what we need to do for our community to go forward? And that is something we got to take into consideration. Now, I'm going to tell you, I was not here when y'all decided to help one business out on their franchise. I understand, and y'all can Wait, correct say that me. again. It's, when we decided not to do what? When y'all decided to help one business on their franchise commitment. Now, you explain to me, this is about bingo gold, that y'all cut their franchise fee in half for the next few months. Is that correct? Because that's what I was told. Let me address that. Bingo Gold uh, pays the city $10,000 per month. Yes. Okay. And they were down to 25%. Well, they were closed first. Then they, were, they paid through, through that. Then they were limited to 25% occupancy, which meant that they couldn't make any money whatsoever. That is a different kind of, uh, of aid, Ms. Hendricks. I mean, we wouldn't be humans. <clears throat> we wouldn't have a heart if we didn't give them some relief because if they paid the $10,000 and had 25% occupancy during COVID-19, okay, during the pandemic, <clears throat> and they're still not up to occupancy, they've been paying that for how many years, Ms. Goldman? $120,000 a year. No other business pays the city $120,000 a year. They are a special case, and we did 
what we needed to do and what was right to do. Well, you may <coughs> want to take that $120,000 that you get a year, and I think that's great. That's what you want to do. But also, there are a lot of people that go there, and I just talked to one that says maybe they know people that's lost their homes, their cars, yeah. you know, their lives. We, we've got to limit, and, we've got to limit you. Well, You're supposed to have three minutes. These are comments, not a dissertation. Well, so the, I've thing, got a judge the thing waiting. is, we have businesses. <clears throat> okay. We pay our taxes. <clears throat> not one time did anybody come to us and say, what can we do for you? We were shut down, too, for months. What, you what have, would you, you like, have businesses Ms. Sanders, and things. what would you like for us to do? What, what would you saying, like for us to do? I don't think you should have done anything. If you weren't going to do it for everybody, you shouldn't have done anything. You don't have that kind of agreement. You don't have a franchise agreement with the city of Bastrop. <clears throat> you don't have one. That was a special case. We're not going to talk about that because well, that's, that's a, done. That's just a feeling that business people well, that I've talked to, I, I'm, we I'm sorry. because we felt like that was a gambling situation. That is not a local business like we serve, but okay. everybody has their own opinion, so that's fine. Yes. Okay. For the firemen, let me tell you what we've done the past year. We've had a local citizen that gave money to help improve the fire station on Mirable. We put in four doors. They painted. They did blinds, lights. We, all that was done. You know, we, they got a washing machine and a dryer that the chamber special. and a special one <laughs> for them to do their, their equipment. Those are things that local people have been able to do because <clears throat> we care. Ms. Hendricks, let, let, let me state. Now, let I me want state. to be able to get through. Okay, go ahead. Cotton, you know, because I know this is only limited time. But we are trying to help the firemen. The thing that is upsetting to us is that it goes back again to us that you want to raise our millage again. And in comparison to the other cities, when you talk about economic development and you want to bring business in here, <clears throat> that is one of the things that can hinder people from coming. Okay. It's higher millages. Now, we just passed a tax. We just spent, what, how much does it cost for us to have a special election that we just had just on a tax proposal that the city had to pay? You know, and you don't have to answer, but I understood that most of the time, on an average, it's about $30,000. 26,000, yeah. I said about 30,000. If it's 26, the only thing, yeah. For, for that that yeah. we did for extra, <clears throat> and then we found out that some of it, on the way I understood, was an increase in some of the millage. Now, we're saying if we keep on doing this, we're hurting ourselves. Now, we have been willing to help and do the firemen because we believe in them and we love them, and my goodness, they're one of the best things that we have here in this community. But what have y'all done as a council to help pay them? What has been done in the past? All we asked you to do last year was to cut your budget by 1%. 1%. And then here we are in a COVID crisis on businesses we're not getting the income that we did. We've had to take a cut in salaries. Ms. Hendricks. We've had to do all of Ms. that. Hendricks, and I'm just this is going you. too long. Okay. I, I got your message. We got your message. You're against this. Well, we, we what want else the do you have? council to have it, and yeah. we want you to understand, and we want these firemen to understand. We believe in you, and we want you paid. But they have got to do something because our money was already taken for taxes to do that okay. and to turn back around and tell us we have to do it again. We want a compromise, and I think having a committee to come together. Ms. Hendricks, I asked you all to do that months ago when we did it. I asked you to come up with a plan. We did it. What? We for did. us to cut, cut the budget? We can't do it. One percent. We can't do it. $120,000 a year. We can't, we, we can't do it. And if we got 120000 a year, that wouldn't pay them. The judicial interest alone is 177000 a year. To, 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 last year was 6% judicial interest. It, this, this debt grows by $460 a day. And we've got to pay it. We've got to let the people decide. <clears throat> I'm not asking this council to decide. I'm asking to let the citizens decide. 
What's wrong with that? Well, I'll tell that's you one democracy. thing that's wrong with it. I have a business, and I have no say in it. Well, you can campaign against it. Because I do not live in the city, you but can everything against it. affects my business. And all the business, and there's not only me. Let me there's ask you a other question. other people that let, live that way. Let, let me ask you a question. Uh, can you step over? Tim Williams, can you come up, please? Timothy Williams is our chief of fire prevention. And I think he's the greatest. Yes, ma'am. If we really loved them, we'd pay them. The doors okay. we appreciate. The doors we appreciate. Well, then, I'm, this the is sentence. my suggestion. Just, Why don't you do a sales tax where everybody has to pay? Right. But we, we're at the I'm limit. I'm all for we're a at sales the limit. tax. We're at the limit. Everybody we can't pay. do it. You we can't do it. You get from Baton Rouge to do it. Okay. Mr. Williams, can you come up, please? Well, I got, the, I got it that you all are against it. But I, we're They're saying. <clears throat> no. If you were for them, you'd want to pay them. Uh, Mr. Williams? <clears throat> Mr. Williams. Uh, we went from a class four to a class one. When I campaigned for mayor, I promised that we would get the fire department back to at least a two and try to get to a one. All of those gentlemen were already working here, and I knew when I looked at this man that they weren't a four. <clears throat> and I also realized I took a trip to Baton Rouge before I took office, <clears throat> May the 2nd, to, to, uh, with the Monroe Chamber. Ron Bush was on the bus with us. I asked Ron, I said, Ron, can you run numbers and tell me what the difference is in a four and a two on if we got the fire rating up? <clears throat> he came back to me and he said about 20%, okay? So I reasoned that, Ms. Hendricks, if we can save you thousands of dollars, we're asking you for three mills. That's <clears throat> one mill, if you got a $100,000 home, or $100,000 business, and it's assessed at 10% per year, then that is $10 per year for a mill. We're talking about a $30,000 home, a person would pay, I mean a $100,000 home, a person would pay 30 bucks a year. Now we've got waste management here tonight, and your trash is gonna cost you uh, $84 a year, okay? And we're asking you in the $100,000 home for $30. We're asking you for $60 if you're in a, if you're in a $200,000 home. $90 if you're in a $300,000 home. Exactly what you're paying for trash to get them paid. Now, Tim, Mr. Williams, I'm sorry, Chief. Uh, <clears throat> have you gotten any calls about insurance uh, to, to verify what the difference is between a four and a three? Can you tell me about just one of the many calls that you've had to verify? Tim's our chief of fire prevention. Can you tell us? Yeah, I've had, I've had three or four uh, in the last two weeks that have verified the differences in the insurance rates. And one of them was all the way up to $668 a year, all the way down to $100 and something. Dollars. Yeah, it okay. Let, let's, of, let's talk about one certain house on Nav Street. You didn't ask for any name. But I believe you were talking to Farmers or one of the insurance companies. I don't know which one. But you ask, you didn't ask for names, you didn't want to get personal. What's the difference? What was their what was their pay what were they paying before June, before you guys? And we did a lot to get this fire rating. We built a two acre fire training ground. We did a lot. It was work. But I believed in this man and, and the chief. And we yeah. did it. Yes, but you're saving more by going from a four to a one than the tax is costing. It's the, sa it's the same coin, it's just different sides. So that's, I just want the people to decide. I don't want these men yeah. to decide I and women. You, Ms. Hendricks, you can, well, you can let's, form let's a, that. the let's chamber. $30,000 was spent almost on a, on a separate election. You're going to do another one, so that's another 30000 no, it's going to be on the same day that we get elected. It's not going to cost a penny more. You can meet us halfway. Miss, Miss, we have a plan. Miss Hendricks, we have a, we have a plan. We have a plan. But I'm telling you that every person in Morehouse Parish saved a lot more by, by these gentlemen busting their butts. Okay, and we appreciate the doors. We appreciate the painting. We appreciate that st stuff that people did. But they need their money. Some of these people are dead and their families are still here. This thing is growing. We can't pay the interest a year. We can't pay the interest. Now, they're willing to work with us 
and settle the thing. We can't pay the interest. This is the only way we can do it. All we're asking for the public for is to co-sign with us, and we're going to do everything we can to pay it down. We need to settle this thing. We, need, we can't let this thing drag on. Now, can you, pay, can you do a sales tax for everybody? <clears throat> Fire is property and lives. Fire is property. A guy with a bicycle doesn't need the fire department. But a person with a home and a business needs the fire department just like they put out the Jacks building. Uh, they, are you, are you but, saying but, it's but, against the law for us to have a sales tax to pay the fire we've department? We've reached the limit. They're not going to no, approve no, us. You can actually no, get permission. Dying. You could actually get permission to Baton Rouge for that. But why not let the whole parish help pay for this? Because, because we don't service the whole parish. They do help the volunteer fire departments when necessary and when need be. They do. Well, I just I want the, the people the to decide. To What's wrong with place? democracy? What's wrong with letting the people decide? What's wrong with taking it to the voters? You can always get signs saying no tax. You're killing the businesses. This is democracy. These, these gentlemen shouldn't make that decision. The only decision I'm asking them to make is to let the voters decide. The voters should decide this. The voters do not all own property. You're wanting people who own property to pay more. The other thing that it is hurting I want you to pay a lot less than you're saving. With more, more okay. millage, we have lost Ms. Hendricks, I have, I have people waiting. And it's hard to get people to Okay, come well, I, I appreciate you, but we're going around in circles. You've made your statement. You, right, you're they against know it. We love, we, they know we love them. And if we love them, we brought it up and we if, if we love them, if we love them, if to love them, now I'm as long as I'm mayor, it might just be until till uh, June, June 30th. But as long as I'm mayor, if I'm mayor another term, we're going to do everything we can. But if we can reach a, an agreement with them and stop the growth of this thing, and then the city can put in extra, and we got a plan for that. Why didn't we do that last year? We can't, we can't pay the interest, Ms. Hendricks. We can't pay $180,000 a year. We can't pay the interest. It'll never go down. It's impossible. But they are. What was it that, that this happened? It wasn't mine. I wasn't here. But who's, who do you uh, tell it, We shouldn't problem. even worry about. Look, I can't go. This, they filed a suit in 2008. So every administration from 2008 on is it's not the people it wasn't the people that didn't pass. these are their representatives so well, I'm so sorry. everyone that but was we here need to come with it with at least coming together and find out a way i okay. asked for that i asked for that okay. you haven't given me anything in right you haven't okay. gone to our our budget and said cut this 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 no one's done that would i asked you to do it do no i asked you to do it we did. We, we tried. Did. What, we you, what, what line we items? Asked, wait. Friday. What line items we did you? What did you? What did you cut? Did. What did you cut? Police or fire? When we came first, with saying cut one percent of the budget, we were pretty much shut Where? down. Where? Where? Across the budget. Across so cut, budget. cut police, cut fire, and cut public works. One percent? You're just telling us. Miss Hendricks, one percent won't do it. Miss Hendricks, Miss Hendricks, Miss Hendricks. I'm not going to argue with you. Your time is up. Your time is up. Thank you. But the uh, but the the plan that you have to piecemeal them for the next 25 years is not going to work. How long is it going to take you to raise the millage? How many years? <clears throat> we're we're asking for 10 years, but we can pay it out in six with the plan that we have. We have a plan to add on to it, but they are willing to meet us. And they they bend over backward to negotiate and meet us. This is the only way. It's the only way. The piecemeal, a little of this, and then another mayor gets elected, another council, okay. and they we, say. We, we understand, but just before I sit down, just try to realize I'm here because I represent these businesses. I understand, Mr. Over two I months understand. this virus, I visited every chamber member in this parish. Yes, ma'am. And every one of them has given me the horrible story of how they are hanging on by a thread. I know that. So our concern that's why, is for our business. That's why we wanted a class one fire department. 
That's why they worked so hard to get a class one so they could save those businesses. Every business by law, every home by law, every home is saving more. But you're telling us of what you're saving and you're not willing to cut your budget to save. You want we us can't to do cut it. back so we can pay more because they're saving this. They're saving your home just like they're saving the rest of And residential, I agree. I'll turn around and handle 30 bucks. I'll hand Timothy $30 tonight if I need to. It's the, it's the businesses that are going to pay more. Yes, you want my 30 bucks. Well, well Miss, Miss, with all due respect, <laughs> yeah, with all due respect, we have firemen that's in nursing homes. They need their money. We got, if we understood it, we could do this. Now, I can't talk about negotiations, but I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this. If we, if the, if the, if the public bastard would do the thing of integrity and let's borrow the money, let's do the bond, let's borrow the money, then we will kick in, but it will freeze it at a level that we can afford. We asked you that last if, year. We asked you that last year. What? Trey Heitzel came here and said that mm -hmm. same, same thing. Trey was going around in circles, okay? Circular reasoning. No, I'm saying if we could pay them, if we could go to the, go and do a bond and get a lump sum, they're willing to take less than we owe them. We told you that last year. What? And we said that you could turn around and you could cut your budget by 1% and pay, to pay that, to bond, pay that bond. We did that Trey last year. No, no. Trey stood up wait, here and explained every bit Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We can't go bar, do a bond on just a promise, okay? We can't say, oh, we're going to cut the budget and we can do this bond. We have to have the signature of the taxpayers, a yes vote. And we can pay this thing off and for what, what the city can do, whatever we can throw in, and we got some plans. Uh, Timothy Williams is, is familiar with, with what we can raise <clears throat> if we get it, if we... You know, I'm not going to talk about what they are willing to do because I don't know exactly, but I know what I've told my the attorney for the city that here we are. We owe over three million dollars. We owe one point six seven million in, in, in back pay. April of 17, when I came in this building and Mr. Prater came in this building and on that date, April the 17th, the court said pay them and it said get a forensic accountant. Ms. Goldman will attest to this. And you all agree to what you owe. So that was done. That was done. I mean, this thing could have been settled in 2008 for a couple of hundred thousand dollars. This could have been settled <clears throat> last year. That's right. No, it couldn't. Miss, Miss Hendricks. Miss Hendricks. Miss Hendricks. Your plan. And what you're saying your plan. is this is what you want. But you don't want to cut 1%. We, we, 1%. we will cut what we can, but it's, we can't attack this. We can't attack this by by throwing $120,000 a year at this, because it grows more than that. But they are willing to take less and, and go home, put it in a, a savings account, or if buy a boat, or do something. That, then if they'll take less, then cut it. You may not have to cut it at 1%. But M you Ms. Go, Ms. Ms. Hendricks, Ms. Hendricks, we can't, count, we can't count on that, but we can count on the bond. We well, can't count on that. <clears throat> we can't count on that. Next year's an election. Could be another council. The, the firemen lost, and they, they filed an appeal, a, a mandamus appeal, with the Second Circuit Court, where the court essentially said, you can't make the city pay you, okay, unless it's, I'm not going to talk about it. Well, can I ask but, you, this is look, all I'm asking. Can y'all at least get a committee, get Katrina with you, Time is business up. with you, before Time is up. Ever put it on a I asked them to do that. I asked Robert to do it. Go get your plan. I how do we how would it do with me forward to move forward in order to save you know the time that we got and go ahead and make an effort for it? But I'm just saying we need to uh, we need to be together. We don't need to be No, together. I'm saying how much we overspent we overspent by a hundred thousand dollars last year. You get Wait, we you overspent. We overspent by a hundred thousand dollars. I can't find a nickel of waste. That lady there does not waste money. She watches every penny. She's she's not waste. She's anti waste. And every time we do something, I discuss it with Miss Goldman. I value her opinion. 
and if it doesn't make sense, and we overspent by $100,000, you tell me what we could have done to keep from overspending last year. If I had year. last year's budget, I would have you what you could have done. Ms. Hendricks. Right now, I just don't have it on my hands, but there are Well, I asked you to do that when you all were here. Go did. get the budget. And we, we did, did bring it. We did bring it. We, we looked at the, the budget. All, all he did was talk in hyperbole. Uh, yeah, yeah well, let's so move on. Okay. Well, thank you. We all we're asking is that the, look, we're on the ballot that day, March the 21st. I'm on the ballot if I run. They're on the ballot if they run for re-election. This will be on the ballot. Let the folks say we're against the mayor. We're against whoever votes yes for this. I'm willing to do that. But there is a day of reckoning, and it should be on that day when we're on the ballot. It should be on there. Vote us out. Get a get an anti-settle with the fireman mayor, because I'm not one. We've got to pay them. Well, I will ask the councilman. This is the only way. All um, we I asked that That's in October. We just want we, some. Miss some Hendricks, we asked that in October. Come bring us something in paper. Who's got paper? Who? We no, you don't. You don't have a line item say I'm cut. Sorry, don't buy Trey six Heisel, weed either. It's, we're not going to get. Trey yes, Heisel stood right here giving a. Point. And he went round and round in circles. Well, no. <laughs> okay. okay. Circular reasoning. This is the only way. This right. is, well, thank yeah. you for listening. Thank you. We thank appreciate you. I do appreciate it. We appreciate it. these firemen back here, and yes, we do want them to get paid. But I'm just, I, you know, I've got to have one more word. Go ahead. <laughs> these businesses are just as important as Bingo Gold, even though Bingo Gold gives you 120000 a year. DNA, Simmons, all of them, Barnett, it doesn't matter. We, we agree. And if they had a similar deal with the Bastrop where they were paying a premium, that they were paying a premium, even $100, Ms. Ford, and they, they couldn't do business. If we could legally do it, we'd do it. Bingo Gold, it was the right thing to do. They had no customers, and we were milking them for 10 grand a month. Okay, well, I apologize to Judge. Judge, we're gonna take, we're gonna take you, Judge. Uh, oh, can, we, can we get Judge Callum now before? Can, can we do that, Ms. Goldman? Okay. Judge, would you come up? I hate that you were here when we were having a discussion. That's okay, Mayor. It's democracy in action. So <laughs> I'm going to take a selfie with you if that's okay, if I can operate this thing, just to show I was here. <laughs> My name's Jay McCallum, and it's a pleasure to be here, and, and I appreciate the opportunity to appear before you. I live in Union Parish. I live in Farmerville. I was born and raised there. Uh, I'm on the Second Circuit Court of Appeal now, and I'm running for Supreme Court, and it's on the November 3rd ballot. Uh, Justice Marcus Clark is retiring, and I'm running to fill his unexpired term, and Morehouse Parish and Bastrop are in that district, of course, and I'm here to seek your vote, to be quite plain about it. I, I want your vote. And I think I've hit everybody in the court, in, in the uh, alderman's room, the council room here, chamber, and, and got a bookmark and hand out to them. Uh, I'm the first person in my family to ever go to college, much less go to law school. Uh, I, my parents worked hard, and they appreciated education. That's why they wanted to instill in me the value of education, and they helped make it possible for me to go to college at Northeast Louisiana University. I graduated from there, and then I went to LSU Law School where I got my law degree, and I went back to Farmerville. Now, I grew up outside Bernice in what they call the Pisgah Baptist Church community, but if you're gonna practice law in, Far in Union Parish, you need to go back to the parish seat, so I went back to Farmerville. An older attorney there, Mr. Armand Rabin, who was semi-retired, on the word of a lady who had worked for him as secretary before hired me or allowed me to come back in and work with him at 205 East Jackson Street. Now, the significance of 205 East Jackson Street is this. It was located right in between Kilpatrick's Funeral Home and First United Bank, so I got clients coming and going eventually, <laughs> but it took a while to build that up. Uh, the lady who recommended me had worked for him, and she'd helped raise me and Bernice, uh, so to speak. So it's... Uh, Interesting how that took place. I was a public defender for a couple of years, and then I became an assistant district attorney briefly, and then I ran for state representative in 1991 and got elected. 
from 1992 through 2002, I served as a state representative. And when I got elected in 90, uh, 91 and took office in 92, the northwest corner of Morehouse Parish was actually in my legislative district. I have spent a lot of time in Morehouse Parish, spent a lot of time in Bastrop, working with the people here. I have been married 37 years. I have had a, uh, a partner, if you want to say that, a lady who has worked with me for 33 years, almost as long as I've been married, and she was raised, born and raised in Bastrop. Wanda Smith, she was. She married a Witherington. The, the Witheringtons used to have a shell station, and she married John Witherington. And she, so she's from here, but we've, we've been working together for those 33 years, and she hadn't run me off yet. I always tell people I work for her. She doesn't work for me. I then became a uh, trial court or district court judge. I was elected to that and served for 15 years in that position. And as I said, I'm now in the Court of Appeal where I have that experience. And what Court of Appeal judges do and what the Supreme Court does, which is the ultimate Court of Appeal in this state, is review what trial courts have done. I've actually been at the trial court level. And in fact, I'm the only candidate in this race who has ever presided over a trial. I'm the only candidate in this race who's ever presided in a courtroom. I'm the only candidate in this race who's ever been woken up at 2.30 at night to examine a search warrant to see if there was or was not probable cause and stayed up the rest of the night if there was because that first search warrant might lead to something else or lead to an arrest warrant. I have that experience. And I think that experience combined with the appellate court experience is important. If you're going to teach a driver's ed class, you need to have taken driving yourself at one point. So I'm not just grading the papers in a class that I didn't take. I, 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 as an appellate court judge, I grade the papers of a class that I actually took myself. And one of the most important things I did as a legislature was, legislator was help get the funding for the very first drug court in this state. As a district court or a trial court judge, one of my, the planks of my platform when I ran was to start a drug court in the third judicial district with Union and Lincoln Parishes, and with the help of my colleagues, we were able to do that, and that drug court has been functioning ever since. Do we save every person that comes through there? No, because uh, it takes more than us to change behavior. It takes God to change the heart, and then the behavior follows that. But we save some, and we have a family that's very active in my home church, First Baptist Church of, Trump, uh, First Baptist church of Farmville now, because we started a drug court program to help aid and supplement <coughs> The, uh, the court's drug court program, and, and that young man and his family graduated drug court and are doing great. So we, we do help a few, and I think that's worthwhile to break that cycle of going back into the system and back into the system and staying into it. So I've got the experience on all those levels. I'm, I'm right next door in Union Parish across the uh, river, and, and like I say, this isn't my first trip to Bastrop, my, my first trip to Morehouse Parish. I, I come up here a lot, and so I want your support. I need your vote. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come here and visit with you and speak to you. I'm going to apologize. I got one other uh, meeting tonight that I'm, I'm going to drive to, so I'm going to leave to try to, to, to get there. And, uh, but I'll be back before this election is over. I'll, I'll be back <coughs> through Bastrop, and I'll come back through City Hall and see everybody. And I appreciate uh, Ms. Goldman working with me to help get me on the agenda here and get my paperwork done. And I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you all. And I appreciate the opportunity to be here with everybody who took part in this meeting tonight and uh, i understand that uh, these issues are important to everybody involved and i appreciate the fact that we live in a country where we can talk about such things even when we don't agree thank you all, all right. so much mayor uh, I, I have one question for yes, miss goldman miss goldman uh judge gave these hand gels is this an ethics violation if i take i, I hope not <laughs> I would ask permission because I didn't get up there for Miss Goldman. Can I get up there and give her one, Mayor? Yes, you can. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay. Thank you for coming. Uh, we had a great relationship with, uh, with uh, Justice Marcus Clark. Uh, he was a great, great justice, and uh, we uh, look forward to good things in the Supreme Court of the State of Louisiana. Thank you for coming Thank and thanking much, enough God. of us to come. I appreciate it. God bless y'all. God bless you. I work with you in the state cameras. I work with Charlie Mack and you in the state cameras. Oh, my God. Well, don't do everything. <laughs> and I have, I have had all of this problem here for years. You have some of my drugs. Thank you very much. He's a certified counselor. It's a, it's a ministry as much as a, anything else, I'm going to tell you. So I appreciate but, everything you did for him. But, again, uh, you're, you're very welcome, and I thank you for saying that. I sure do. Thank you, Judge. Thank you all. God bless you. Um, I'm going to ask uh, this gentleman right here, Mr. Howell. Mr. Howell, can you come up, please?
Uh, Mr. Locke, you were talking about trash uh, just early right before the meeting. <coughs> Let me introduce Mr. Kerry Howell, who is with Waste Management. And um, I felt it necessary that, that, that uh, as an announcement, part of um, if you have any questions for Mr. Howell, Mr. Howell, uh, can you talk just briefly about sure. um, what we've been talking about? And, uh, and okay. you got one? I think he's already got one. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm I got Gary one. Howell. Uh, I'm Thank a you. public Thank sector you, representative with waste management. <clears throat> and uh, I'm not running for any office or anything, but I have been married for 43 years. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, we've been working with Morehouse Parish for some time, and we have uh, executed a contract with the parish, and, and we'll be collecting and disposing of household garbage uh, from residents beginning January 1 of, of next year. Uh, there's a, a, a sign-up period. We'll be sending out postcards. Those will be going out probably about the end of next week. Everything is already set up in our system so that you can sign up now online by going to wm.com. Go to uh, click on residential services. It'll guide you through. You put your address in. You can sign up. Uh, you can also call a 1-800 number that will be on the postcard. We'll also be providing some content for you if you want to use it for your social media uh, to help get the word out. But I thought it was important, you know, been working with Morehouse Parish I wanted to, to involve the city in the partnership as well because, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, I would say about half of the residents in the parish are in the city, right? right? So we want to involve you guys. We want to be partners with you guys as well as with the, with the parish. Um, there, will, there will be some questions that come up, I'm sure. A lot of these will be answered with these postcards that go out. Uh, the... the Subscribers or the residents do have to subscribe. They will get a cart, a 96-gallon cart, uh, that will be delivered to your resident in late December. We're hoping to get as many people subscribed as we can by the end of November so we can establish our routes and all that so we can let people know what days they'll be picked up. But it'll be once, uh, once a week service. It'll be cart contents only. Uh, we will not pick up bulk or, or, or yard waste or those things, those things will have to be taken to the uh, open top dumpster. But we'll be using automated uh, side load trucks, which will provide a lot of safety for us and for residents. It's a lot more efficient, a lot more safe. So those are some of the things that we'll be doing. And I just wanted to let, you know, meet you guys, introduce myself to you guys. Uh, Y'all call me if you have any issues or problems. And, uh, We'll also uh, answer any questions that you might have. We can't expedite this, sir, because our trash is in a mess. Yes, sir, I know it is, and, <laughs> and we want to expedite it. Uh, but we also want to do it right. We want to make sure that we have the equipment in place, all the systems in place, uh, and all that. And if we can start before January 1, we will. But that's our target date, and that's, that's when we expect to start uh, getting all our carts out the last couple of weeks of December. Now, this is a hybrid plan. Uh, the police chair is going to take the uh, money that they've been collecting and, and fund, but part of it is individuals, and you've given out these. I hope everyone in the audience. And the, it's going to cost $84 a year, $21 per quarter. Correct. <clears throat> and and uh, cost is, it's you know, it's a tremendous cost to dispose of, of waste. We talked about um, sign-ups. You said WM.com. 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 Yep. And they can sign up. We can sign up. But And for people who might not have computers, uh, we're going to, uh, we talked about coming and going to our technology building yep. and letting people come in and sign up manually. We'll have a sign-up period uh, <laughs> until November the 30th. And, and uh, either online or by phone. And probably somewhere around that time, we will schedule a day or two that we will have people here in person at your building to sign up those people who maybe don't have access to uh, 
you know, a computer or phone or, or right. can't pay online or whatever. So we'll, we'll do that as well. Okay. Any more questions from? Oh. We'll have 96 gallon carts. And, uh, everything, go through that. everything we we will only pick up what's in that 96 gallon cart. Okay. Now there's an option you can get a second cart. You can which, if your household that you know one <laughs> cart a week is not enough. You can get a second cart. A second cart is not subsidized by the parish. That you're on your own on that one. The first one you're going to pay seven dollars a month for because the parish is paying for part of that cost. The second one's going to cost you $12 a month because you're paying it on your own. But that's still a very low, very low cost. And most people are not going to need a second cart, but there will be, uh, there will be some. Now, our, our plan is that if you want a second cart, that will come after we start services in January. We won't deliver two carts to you initially. We'll deliver one cart to everybody who's subscribed. Then if you decide you need a second cart, We'll, we'll add that cart. Businesses uh, can also subscribe. They subscribe as a business, as a small business, and they will pay a different rate. The rate for business is $25 a month. And they can get a cart. It'll be picked up the same, same way. Now, if they need more than that, then you need to get a dumpster, which you contract directly with your provider. Any other questions? Just want to start as soon as we can. <laughs> Tomorrow, Larry. We're working on it. <laughs> we're working on it daily, and uh, there's a lot of pieces of the puzzle that have to go together. But we're we're working on it every day, and we're we, we will be there. So, we thank y'all and uh, appreciate anything y'all. If y'all have any issues or questions, let us know. <clears throat> I've got a few uh, under under uh, under value ethics things that I'm gonna leave for you, and <laughs> thank you. I'm not gonna give them to you. I'm gonna leave them, and y'all can take them if you want. Thank you, sir. We do appreciate it, and we look forward to working with you and having a good, great relationship. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank all of you. <clears throat> okay. And we'll be in touch. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, item number uh, five, approve a previous minutes, regular meeting of September 10th. Gentlemen, what's your pleasure? Okay, it's been moved uh, by Councilman Shaw, second by Councilman Prater. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. The minutes are approved. Item six, Finance Committee Report, Resolution 19-1917, Bills and Claims for the month of September. Mr. Shaw. Yes, sir. Been moved by Finance Committee Chair Shaw. Second. Second by uh, Mayor Pro Tem Prater. Uh, any discussion? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. The, uh, the resolution is adopted. Our item, yes, item nine, resolution 20 1918. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Item 8, Resolution 20-1919, a resolution <clears throat> ordering and calling for a special election to be held in the city of Bastrop, <clears throat> Louisiana, to authorize the levy and collection of a special tax year-end, make an application to the State Bond Commission, and providing for other matters in connection therewith. <clears throat> Mr. Pierre was supposed to be here. Mr. Pierre is our lawyer. Mr. Pierre is the man who... who um, negotiates with the firemen and their, their lawyer, the firemen through their lawyer. And <clears throat> gentlemen, this is the only way, and we should let the voters decide. We should let the voters, that's all I'm asking is let the voters decide. This is a democracy. Let the voters decide. We have to do this because I'm saying if we're going to do it, we don't have time for the committee thing because we have to go before the bond commission. This is a time order thing, Larry. We can't, if we delay, we can't have it. And it's best to have it 
<clears throat> on the day when we are elected. And so people can campaign for and against. It's a, it's a campaign thing. Get a candidate, run against the mayor, run against the councilman, whoever vote yes, run against them. This is democracy. Now, can we have a special call meeting? Next week? Next week. Yeah, we can. Yeah. If he's old, okay, if he's. We, we don't need to uh, go over this again tonight. I think so we can tell down, not mm. turn, but at least have it ready for what we're going to do. And I've got numbers available. Go ahead. Go on. Let's let him, let's let him finish. Go ahead. We have a call meeting of the council to just make ourselves available, whatever day it is, or whatever day it is. Next Thursday, Ms. Goldman. Okay. All right. Uh, that's acceptable. We got, we got on board. Mm -hmm. we got when you say on board, what do you mean? Well, he's party to the suit. He's party to the suit. They, <clears throat> yeah, we don't want to get them involved in, you know, they, they have 32, or they had 32, some are gone, some in nursing homes. Uh, <clears throat> and I will... I will share the plan with any councilman who wants to know how we can get this paid off way ahead of time. We can do it, but I'll, I'll share it with you, councilman, but I can't discuss it with the community or anyone else. But councilmen have a right to know. We can show you the... I, I asked the committee to give it to me in paper, line item, line item, line item, line item, line item. Line item. Well, you know, uh, I'm not worried about how this got where it is. You, know, you can grunt. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go ahead and make the motion, Councilman. Can I get a second? Yeah, that's it. Okay. So is you, did you second? Okay. Been moved by Councilman Locke, second by Councilman Shaw, that we table this until next week and we'll call a special meeting next Thursday. Uh, Mr. Pray, do you have any question? Okay, all in favor? Uh -huh. Ayes have it, that, that's table. Can we set a time now that we've got a quorum here for next Thursday, 5.30, 6? Is early better? Is it okay with you, Larry? Okay. 530. Okay. Thank you. Um, item 9. Resolution 20-1918 commending District Chief William Lee Jones upon retirement with the uh, Bastard Fire Department. Um, Chief Crowder? Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Jones is not here. Yeah, Chief Williams is not here. Yeah. Lee Jones. I'm, I'm at, yeah. Chief, Chief Jones is not here. He's retired. Yes. Come on, Charlie, we ain't got old names. You're young. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Chief William Lee Jones uh, started in uh, 1989, May the 25th, 23rd, I think. Me and him started on the same exact day. Uh, he retired this past week, was his last, one of his last days. 31-year uh, veteran. Uh, he was a good man, uh, a good, good chief. We're going to miss him, you know, uh, so we <clears throat> like to wish him well in his retirement life. So we just like to say thank him for his service and may God bless him. Amen. Gentlemen, uh, do we have a, thank you. Thank you, ladies. Okay, that's a resolution. Can we get a motion? I make a motion that we recognize the It's been moved by Councilman Shaw, second by Councilman Prater that we, uh, uh, pass this resolution. 
All in favor? Aye. Resolution is so passed. Uh, item 10, 20 dash, resolution 20 dash 1920, a resolution allowing the two members elected by the fire and uh, police department as provided in paragraph B1C of this section of uh, revised statutes 33 colon 2536 shall be, shall not be required to be a resident or qualified voters uh, of the city of Bastrop. Uh, Chief Campbell, can you come up please? Uh, and Chief, uh, Chief, uh, um, Fire Chief and Police. Uh, what this, uh, let me finish reading it because I need to, to be a resident or qualified voter of the city of Bastrop, Morehouse Parish area in which they are appointed to serve. <clears throat> they, right now, a person would have to live in the city of Bastrop to serve on the police and fire civil service board. Um, our pool of applicants or people, we have firemen and policemen living even outside the parish, and they are precluded from serving on this on this board. And we wanted, I wanted to open it up so that they could have a democratic process and pick among any of their peers. Uh, do we have any objection from you, Chief Campbell? Do we have any objection from you, Chief Crowder? No, sir. Okay. Okay, so um, it will just let anyone run. They can run and uh, and serve on the civil service board. I'll I'll ask for a special resolution to adopt to to go out a trail and include your house in the city, so you could run, Mr. Prater. This is a hard job, Mr. Prater. It's work all the time. And you get talked about on Facebook all the time. All the time. Um, gentlemen, do we have a motion or do you oppose or are you with this? You make the motion? Okay. Okay, it's been moved by Councilman Shaw, second by Councilman Locke that this. Um, Thank you, thank you, that, uh, that this opens up the process to any, any employee um, um, on the fire or police department to, to represent the fire or police department on the civil service board. Okay, resolution, oh, I'm sorry, vote. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Resolution adopted. 11, uh, item 11, resolution 20-1921, a resolution authorizing the mayor to make application to the Louisiana Public Service Commission's energy efficiency program for public entities to make facilities more energy efficient through LED lighting, uh, HVAC upgrades, and other improvements. Um, um, our, uh, Public Service Commissioner, Mr. Foster Campbell, uh, was instrumental in creating a fund that Entergy and Swepco and Cleco and these power companies, all the power companies and big utilities, Atmos Gas and the others, they pay into a fund. And that fund's purpose is to help public uh, entities like the city of Bastrop to save money on utilities by, re by doing uh, purchasing and installing things that will make our buildings more energy efficient. So it doesn't cost anything. Uh, you know, I'm just going to have to do an application, and I'll take any of you gentlemen's help, any of the councilmen's help, if you all want to come down here and do some typing um, and uh, get this up. But I'm asking permission to, to seek some funding. Okay. Uh, do I have your permission to apply for money? Do we have a motion, Mr. Prater? I'm not here. <laughs> okay, it's your choice. So, is 
he's doing this for, for anyone, or is this just special for us? It's for public bodies like us. Yeah. Then, City of Monroe got one last year. City of Monroe got a grant last year. So how long does it take to get that? Do you know, Mike? Uh, the deadline is January 21st, I believe, the absolute deadline, but I wanted to work on it early. And I wanted to get a get a uh, get a head start on it, and uh, I want to thank Mr. Campbell for his effort to create this fund because they want to to do things. Now you know I'm going to ask for what we need. If you don't ask, you don't get. So um, I'm going to ask for um, very serious help. Uh, Robert, do I have your Consent? Can you make it? Okay, thank you. It's been moved by Councilman Shaw, second by Councilman Locke, that we go after this grant in the discussion. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Okay. It's 12. Okay. Resolution 20 1922, fiscal year 2021 to 2026, Aviation Priority Program funding with the Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development. Division of Aviation. We have to do this, have a five-year plan. Is that correct, Ms. Goldman? And this relates to our five-year progression. If you went and looked at the airport, there's a lot of trees been cut down along the runway, on both ends of the runway. <clears throat> that project is our debris removal. We got a grant for, what, 150? I think so. Yeah. We got a grant to get that done. So aeroplanes, when they're landing, they won't get their wheels in the trees. <clears throat> and uh, it's a major project. Uh, the FAA funds safety things first, you know, naturally. I want to get a runway extension so we can land larger planes. <clears throat> Kay King would like that. Um, so we could get King Air 300s in here. And, uh, but that's, you know, that's a plan. But this is a five-year a five-year plan. So, any questions about this? Can we get a motion? Do I need to go into more detail? I mean, it, it's something we got to do anyway. Yes, sir. It shows. Yeah. Y'all do it every year. Yeah, every year. So I'll make the motion. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Shaw makes the motion. Second. Second by Councilman Locke. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, the ayes have it. Uh, resolution, I mean, 13. We're going to, I'm going to ask the council that we table those two, 13 and 14. We have Miss, we had Miss, uh, oh, okay. <clears throat> but we have to do a certain process, right, Miss Goldman? Yes, sir. And uh, Miss um, McLean is here, and it was difficult for Miss McLean to make the, the, uh, the civil service uh, meetings because of when they met. And uh, I'm going to ask you all to have her back on the zoning board. We had a, a person to vacate the zoning, but we're going to appoint someone to civil service. I'm going to ask you to at uh, maybe next week, Ms. Goldman. Okay. Okay. We may put that on for next week in addition to what, what we already have. Uh, 14, appoint member, oh, table, I'm sorry. 15, discussion action, permission to purchase an AVI. Ms. Goldman, um, the council was, uh, was um, reluctant. Um, I think I sent, thank you, Ms. McLean. I'm sorry I didn't call you first okay. before, because um, we just decided to do, table, to realize right before the meeting. So we didn't know it. We didn't, we, I wasn't aware. So, okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Now, I got something for the council. Mr. Prater, pass one down and keep one, please. Robert, can you look at that? Just a minute from the Beekman Charter School Board of Directors meeting, uh, their last meeting Thursday, September the 
17th. The machine that I'm asking for uh, is an ABI Force 23 horsepower beast of a machine that is used in major league ballparks to laser grade them and keep them up even between games. When it rains, you get out there and you, you do things to the field and it air, airs it out and you can play again. We don't have a class. <clears throat> the city of Ruston, the city of Ruston spent $35 million on their sports complex. The city of Ruston spent $35 million on their sports complex. Mr. Fred, we have the fire thing. If you want to come back for that, if you. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm going to, um, if you take out your calculator and you do 33,000 divided by 35 million, we are not competitive for smaller tournaments. Uh, is Jesse Duvall or Isaac Gray here? Mr. Gray, would you come up, please? We have a team, the Dotson Freeriders. Um, they travel ball. And uh, Ruston hosted the Little League World Series uh, two years ago, two years in a row. And it brought in hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, we want hotels here. Travel ball, the average person spends $500 when they go out of town. I feel it's not possible that we can get our fields in shape. Now, you see here that Beekman is having done to one field, they've got one field. And if you look at page two, where we got this, it says item five, to receive September 2020 committee meeting action items uh, to accept a quote from CNR Irrigation at West Monroe uh, to, that's, that's $11,500. Um, item, the next item is a motion to accept a quote from DS Clearing and Equipment Services for $14,500. What they're doing, they're removing the grass from the infield and they're having it laser graded. And that 14,500 is for one laser grading for one field. We have eight fields and possibly can get nine. We can bring tournaments here. You see, when they go to West Monroe or Swartz or the $16 million facility at Sterlington, uh, people come from all over to play there. And they bring money, they spend money at our stores they, they shop, they go to Walmart, they go to our sporting goods stores, D and H. Um, we want to, they don't just say, oh, let's not play until we go to the big field, to, to, to Ruston and, and, and Sterlington and Swartz and West Washington. <clears throat> they, they want to play a lot. They want to get a lot of games in. And this is a world-class machine, the best machine in the world. The New York Yankees use it. The San, San Francisco Giants has three of them at Candlestick Park. The, the, um, the uh, Philadelphia Phillies, the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, just do a search on, Robert, you, were, you and Miss Nancy was in a webinar with me and the manufacturer. Um, I'm asking for less than a tenth of one percent of what, of what, a tenth of one percent, Miss Dorothy, <laughs> okay, <laughs> of what Rustin spent. And don't say we can't do anything. We can't sit here and say, oh, we're a bastard. We can't do anything. <clears throat> Travel ball is big. We'll bring people here for smaller tournaments. Naturally, we can't do 64 teams, but we can do eight teams. We can do 16 teams. We, we, this will make our fields professional grade. It'll, it, it's a laser grader. You drive it blindfold and the, it knows where you are. It puts a laser plane over the field, a conical or a flat plane, and the, the implement 
keeps up and you just drive it. Robert, you saw it. It's the most phenomenal machine. Uh, you, you, I want you to drive it. When it comes back, I want you to drive it. But when COVID is over, we've got busy break up there. We're trying to get our parks in a position that the wife will come with the fishing husband or the husband will come with the fishing wife and walk in our parks. We got the funding for the what we got the ninety thousand dollar funding. Correct, Miss Goldman? We got the okay to spend the money. Yes, yeah, for Smith Wilson Park. We'll have walking trails out there. We applied for another hundred thousand dollars to do walking trails. Yeah, yes, ma'am. A piece of what? Wait, Miss Miss Pat, you know you're out of order, but I'm gonna let you talk. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you talk. Yes, ma'am. Miss Pat, we are going to fix the concessions. We're gonna fix the bathrooms. This is all in the plan. How about the sinkhole in right field? It's been there for a year and a half. We're gonna fix all of that, Miss Pat. When? When we get the laser grader. No. Okay, <clears throat> Miss Miss Pat. You can run for mayor, or you can run for mayor, run for council. That's I'll vote for anybody that runs against you. That's fine. That's fine. I'm fine with that. Yes, go ahead, Miss uh, Miss Cindy. I try to explain. Now you know you're not supposed to be talking now, okay. but go ahead. I'm going to allow it. I tried to explain to some people. They <clears throat> built this uh, um, the, the, the sports complex that they built for the We're not. We're not talking about $16 million, but go ahead. Ms. Hendricks, I'm going to ask you. What? <coughs> Ms. Hendricks, you're out of order. Yeah, but look, um, you can run for mayor. The elections. The elections 321. I don't mind anybody voting against Henry. You know, I mean, if I'm going to advocate for what I believe in, don't get mad at me because I see things differently. Don't get mad. What I'm saying we could do, we could upgrade to bring people here, like what you were talking about. But I don't, I think we got to do that first. <clears throat> Ms. Hendricks, we're talking about a minimum wage employee. This will save us tons of money. It will because one person can ride it and it does the work of 10 people. It's it. You if, if we look at the cost benefit ratio where one minimum wage person, a seven dollar and twenty five an hour person. Cost the city about twenty eight thousand dollars because. <clears throat> and then you'd be complaining about the grass. Okay, not cut. Yes, you would. You'd be complaining. They're not cutting this grass. Okay. Uh, so, but anyway, um, you know, anyone can run for office, but I'm trying to move this town forward out of the dark ages. Now, I ran on a vision to get our fire department to a two, a minimum, hopefully a one. I ran on a vision to get walking trails here. I ran on a vision to get our ball fields in shape. I ran on a vision to get our, our tennis courts so we can play pickleball, so people can come and buy products at DNH Sporting Goods, paddles and things. Now, that's my platform again if I run. And anyone's welcome to oppose it. And our time is up June 30th at midnight. And whoever you know, whoever gets elected, it's going to be on them. But I'm giving my all to make pro to progress better as I see it. I ran on that. I'm not going to change it. I ran on that progress. So <clears throat> this machine is the best machine in the world for what we need. We got eight ball fields, and we can have all of them graded and one person can do the grading. One person. Mr. Gray, come up to the mic. 
<clears throat> you see, Robert, what you all are doing is we are the administration. You all legislate and appropriate. OK, but the mayor decides what is going to get done. But you all have to fund it. No, no hold, it, hold it. That's what mayors run for. If I get elected, I'm going to do this, this, this. What you all are doing is you're messing up our winter schedule because we were counting on this machine. <clears throat> we were counting. You're out of order back there, please. Uh, counting on this machine to get the thing done now. Look at AB, ABI force. Who can say it's not the best machine in the world? No one can. No one's entitled to their own set of facts. This is factual. It's the best machine in the world. <clears throat> it will save us labor cost because one person can get on it and ride. You all act like I'm asking for $567,000. Since all the money stopped for the road, that's probably these people, we're going to patch up their road when we got that machine. And when's yeah. the last time it's in the Mr. Mr. Gray, weren't we, we would have been paving right now, is that correct? Yes, sir. Dreer is making hot mix again. We, we can't <clears throat> pave without hot mix. We can't. We can't use that machine without hot mix. We Mr. tried. We can't go nowhere else. It's only one business. We went to Monroe to try to get it. We had to wait in line before we got back here. Just about had to throw it away. So in other words, we got that machine for nothing. <clears throat> no, they're making hot mix again. We were we had we took the uh Drew a hot mix machine had, had broken down about three or four months. Nothing we can do. We couldn't see that before that. <clears throat> Plus we got, we got spots that we have done two and a half years ago are still standing today. That's right. They hadn't <clears throat> no, so we, if it wasn't for the hurricane, wait, wait, that's fine, Mr. Brady. Uh, Mr. Green, uh, Mr. Green, the machine we had the uh, the Kenwood Kenwood did a recall on the trucks and it got it's been, it's it's got been the, out there this year, huh? It's been out there this year. <clears throat> yeah, it's been out there this year. We 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 done it and we're we're going to go into our winter that machine generates 17 100 degrees and it's best to work uh, to do our major stuff in the fall and winter <clears throat> okay so we uh and 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 we have a limited budget we couldn't buy a lot more we overspent by a hundred thousand dollars last year i mean <laughs> never mind no total no no, no, I'm just saying, Robert, the total, the total that we spent exceeded what we got in by that much. We did a lot of things. We did the Martin Luther King Street Bridge. We did, I mean, we, you know, we did the plans. We did a lot of things <clears throat> that should have been done a long time ago. But all I'm asking for is a, a, a little money to help Mr. Gray, every employee that we hire, 725, that's $15,080, 2,080 hours times 725, plus our contribution to FICA, Social Security, and Medicare, 7.65%. Plus, the only way we can give raises, Mr. Okay. Wait, listen. <clears throat> Mr. Look, <clears throat> they all, no, I never, no, Mr. Bradford, no. I've never, I've never. That's not true. That's not true. I didn't run on Mr. Prater, you never heard me run on raises because I knew the city's finance. The only way we can give raises, <clears throat> the only way we can give raises is to is to employ mechanization so that it takes less people to do the work. Then you can give raises, make people more efficient. I skid steer. Michael Michael Winfield or or one of those guys can go on a lot and have it cleaned in in an hour. Okay, where it took t 10 people with action. These guys are not an Angola chain gang with shovels and pickaxes and stuff. We want to give, we want to have the equipment. Mr. Prater, the way you give raises is to make, create efficiencies. Every employee, when, when we pay $15,080 plus 7.65%, plus we got to pay the hospitalization of the health care, $600 a month, almost seven. $7,200 a year. Then we have to pay workman's comp. That's a $28,000 whenever we, and I could hire three people today and none of you would cough. Not, not a one of you would say, <coughs> you wouldn't cough at it. But when I'm talking about, huh? I could,
could call you and say, hey, I'm hiring two people. I'm going to increase the budget by uh, 48,000, increase the spending by 40, uh, $46,000. I'm sorry, $56,000, that's what two people will do. And I'm talking about getting something that none of you can argue that it's not a good thing. Neither councilman can say that it's not a good machine, that it wouldn't save labor and make us more efficient and give us perfect ball fields, perfect ball fields, sloped 20 degrees between the pitcher's mound and first, second, and base. <clears throat> well, you care about somebody sliding in second base. Mr. Green, you're the only member of the council, myself and you, who played baseball, I think. <clears throat> and it's nothing like sliding in, in the second base knowing that you can slide safely. This is a matter of safety for our children. This is the best thing that we can do to get our fields in shape. And this machine will do all of our fields. $14,500 for one field. $14,500 for one field. We got eight. And hopefully we'll be playing at Barron if we can work something out. And we will have, we can do small tournaments. I know that. Talking about practice. We can do small tournaments. These people want to play in actual tournaments, small tournaments, around before they go to the big ones. And we can start bringing people here for travel ball. I wish Jesse Duvall was here, but he... he Jesus, have mercy. <clears throat> can any councilman tell me why it doesn't make sense? Mr. Locke, can you I'm give me? I'm not going to answer that. Question. Okay. Mr. Prater, can you tell me why it doesn't make sense? Yes, sir. I got other priorities. You, you got other priorities. Okay. All right. Mr. Shaw? Yeah. I've, I've talked to him before, but we need to keep these parks up and get them in shape. And then that's getting the park. That's the main thing we got at the parks. We got the concession stands. We, Mr. Gray and I have a plan to, to get them repaired and make the, make the repairs that Ms. Pat's been talking about. Is that true, Mr. Gray? Yes. And let, okay. let, let, let me say something about, <clears throat> somebody said something about a sink and fill a fi uh, center field, a uh, ballpark. Ball it's the big boys park they're talking about. Well, we did this one and we went in there and dug that whole field. We had a leak in the middle of the field. That's, I, we Here believe that's part of the sinkhole that has had a, a drawback in it. Now, we had to dig up that whole field to find an old sprinkling system was down there that was leaking. And it's still dug up? Yeah, it's still dug up. So we could fix the sinkhole? Yeah. yeah. But uh, we, we believe that that was part of the sinkhole because it hadn't gotten any bigger since we <laughs> stopped the leak there. Right. So that's what at Kubota side there for two or three weeks? Uh -huh. Is that what that Kubota sat there for two or three weeks? Now the Kubota didn't sit out there at the back of the bed. Yeah, but we had to uh, make sure we had it fixed before we started covering it back up. And plus, in the ball wouldn't have been playing. But, it's, you know, when you have those things like that, even with some of the streets that you talk about, if there's a leak anywhere, it's going to create a sucker. That's cool. And... We it's nothing we can do about it. It was there before we got here and probably going to be there when we leave. Whew. But we have attacked more problems than I believe in these last, these last three years, especially with, as far as saving money. Yeah, you did a good job. I'm not we, uh, we have cut all overtime and park and rec was there when we got here. We have, we have done a lot. And uh, no, we can't fix everything in, in, overnight. We had the storm to come in. Nobody expected all those trees to be down. But we had to go in there and get the trees off people's gas lines, water lines, so they can get this stuff cut back on so and get them out the road. Power. We had manpower that wouldn't put that big Well, we could, add, we could add uh, the 5th in Infantry. We still wouldn't have had enough if you saw what we were seeing out there. But we had big oaks uh, that big around. We had two uh, 666 saws. That's about to burn them up, cutting them out the streets. We are... Uh, Creating, like I said, we were doing things to, to uh, help. Things. I had to go get four inmates. Get Mike to uh, give me four in inmates on work release so we can catch up on certain things, like the <laughs> cemetery. You know, it, it's been a struggle. Yeah, and we couldn't get 
inmates for a long time because COVID, when COVID came in they February, locked, they locked them. They locked them down. They locked them down up and wouldn't let them come out. This week. We signed a contract with the Sheriff's Department a week ago. Yeah. We got a Monday. Yep. So don't, don't think we are not trying to fix your streets. We know that, but most of the streets we're trying to fix, most of the streets that are trying to, that we are trying to fix should have been repaid. Yeah. Should have been repaid. But I, well, well, I want a councilman to tell me why, what's the real reason we can't get a $30,000 machine. The real reason, because it's not that it doesn't make sense. That's not the reason. It's not the reason. No one can make a case comparing a $33,000 item to a $7.25 an hour person who will cost us $33,000 in one year and three months and a couple of days. A person who picks up trash. This machine is more valuable than that. You can't make the case. I don't know why. I guess it's because it's me asking. But it makes sense. Mr. Gray wants it. The ball wants it, Parks and Recreation wants it. We can do all of our fields, have them professional grade, the ABI force, 23 horsepower, zero turn machine, laser guided with all the implements. They gave us a COVID-19 price because they're trying to sell them because things have slowed down. When, when, when things pick back up, they're gonna cost us a lot more money. Almost $10,000 more, they cut the price twice for me. Cut it twice, trying to do business. It's a deal now, it's a steal. One minimum wage employee, that machine can do the work of 10 people with shovels, and, and no one can do it right, because a guy out there trying to eyeball it, oh, there's a little hole there, and pitching a little dirt in there, that's the way we do it now. But there's a better way. There's a better way, and it's, we can afford it. How much is the lease, Ms. Goldman? Per month. <clears throat> okay. Did, did did they send you two, two leaves? They sent me some things, but I didn't look. Stephen Asaki. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. Well, it's about eight hundred dollars a month. Okay. You can send it back if you don't want it. It's a lease. I I, I said okay. Council doesn't want to spend thirty three thousand dollars, one tenth of one percent of what Rustin did to be competitive. Well, Mayor, we got to get back to what we started off. Robert, Robert, if we don't do it, we're going to pay more out in labor cost and get less of a product. I don't know why we can't fathom that, that if we get a machine that will do the work of five people and do it perfectly, when you got five people with shovels and rakes trying to get, and the rain comes and we got puddles all over the place, and, and this will cure that. It will grade the field, slope it. So the rain will, will, will wash off and cut the amount of time that we have to spend maintaining. What's hard about seeing that? I'd like to delay it until next week. I'm going to bring it up again, but go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. You want to make a motion that we don't do it? Well, there's an item on the agenda here. How are we going to dispense it? Okay, so no one makes the motion. Okay, well, so we didn't. It failed for lack of a motion. It'll be on the next time, and every time. Okay, um, discussion, action, purchase uh, to purchase an M25G air curtain destructor. Uh, Chief, you're here. Mr. Williams is gone. Tim's gone. <clears throat> Let me read something first. We work hard for the people. Dear Henry Cotton, this notification serves to inform you that recently that the recently submitted request for public assistance, that's an RPA, has been approved. A representative of the Governor's Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness, that's GOSEP, will be in contact with you. And this is dated October 5th, this Monday. I had applied for a lot of assistance through FEMA and uh, 
and uh, to do, do, do debris removal. Let me bring the council up on that. Yeah. No. Yeah, that you got them in your packet, right? No, but this is something other than that. Okay. This is something other than that. <clears throat> uh, what you have is I applied with the Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality to uh, have an emergency debris site. This is the Camel Street. You want to look at that, Larry? You got one in your packet. Uh, the Camel Street for staging only to collect stuff. We got probably 50 thousand cubic yards of debris and that's not even a third of it we have to get rid of it and the most efficient way to get rid of it is is to get a what's called a burn curtain i asked the fire department i called uh chief and and, and chief williams in and said i want you to research burn curtains and give us your recommendation on the best one <clears throat> we have i i asked for the uh the Camel site to be, uh, Robert, you got one of these? I think, okay, all right. To, for the Camel site to be, we got approved for staging. That's collecting stuff. We can't do anything with it, can't chip it, can't burn it, can't do anything. But we're gonna take it out to our 38 acre, um, this, a site behind the dog pound. That, that was my, my, my question back in there. Okay. I just got it. But, uh, this was this week. I, I'm, I'm talking about putting all that. Oh, there. <clears throat> yeah. Well, uh, we couldn't. We had to get the streets cleared. Do you agree? So, yeah. But yeah. So you're going to make a section of town where people have been living for years and years of dumping stuff. Uh, it's, it's debris trees. The, hold on. Mr. Locke. We had no choice. Wait, listen. It was raining. It's muddy down there. We put asphalt from our wrap. We, we tried to build that road going around the dog pound down to our burn site, which is about a half a mile. <clears throat> and we, we get stuck down there. We could not go down there, and we had to clear the trees. We had 11, we had 50 energy trucks here. We had 50 trucks removing power and our guys were right behind them cutting the trees up and we were taking them and hauling them somewhere we had to haul them and that's the only place we could put it because we got a five acre parking lot there's no other place that we that we control that we could put it name one okay. but I, I just wanted to be known that we nobody was aware of that but the mayor we had to act okay okay I just wanted to yeah, we had to get people's power back on. I sure did. Yeah, because the storm hit. I, I we had trees. Yeah. I just, I just Tell, give them my number. That, give them. I'll take the heat. I'll take the heat. I sure did. It's not garbage, Mr. Call it what it is. Okay. It's debris. It's trees. It's oak trees. Primarily oak trees. It's in the record that I made the decision because we couldn't take it to any, any place else that the city, the uh, dirt yard down on Jackson Street wouldn't handle it. It's small. The, uh, we couldn't get to the muddy place down where we burn. <clears throat> and I made the decision, please let me go on record, that I made the decision to use the only five acre hard surface area that we have in the city of Bastrop. So what? Yeah, in a residential neighborhood, right, right. It's industrial and residential because that was an industry. But it was the only place that we had. And if you were making a decision, where would you have put it? Uh, I'm not the mayor. You are. I know. And, yeah, let's not forget that. I'll take the heat. But, but um, we got the DEQ, and now I asked for staging there. And the other one you see is in your is I made a, an application to get, said, Dear Mayor County, the emergency debris site, EDS, re, re, uh, request form was received uh, for the purpose of emergency debris, City of Bastard Marouge landfill debris site, located where, you know, Highway 2 out there. And we've got 
Now, here's the thing. If you look at what's highlighted, disposal is not part of the approval. We can't just take it out there like it is at the garment plant. <clears throat> We've got to burn it. <clears throat> so we got approved to burn out there. Now, if we just light it on top of the ground, it's going to smolder and smolder for days and weeks. Chief, tell me about a, a, the, the instrument here. <clears throat> we uh, dig a pit. <clears throat> yeah, the, the mayor came to us as the fire department because he had a burning <clears throat> issue. He had us to, to research a, a, a possible yeah. way to just to, to get rid of all the rubbish that's out there. In our research, we, uh, the mayor has spoken about the curtain. We researched it, that the trench curtain or pit curtain is one of the best ways to get rid of rubbish because <clears throat> the machine uses a turbo burst of air. It's like a big reverse vacuum cleaner. And you, you dig a pit. 20 feet, wide, 20 feet long by 10 feet wide, and all the rubbish is put in there, set ablaze, your machine is put in place, and it burns, it can burn five to eight tons of, of rubbish within an hour. So the, the turbo blast of the air circulates, it does not, it, it, it creates a curtain, which is called a burn curtain, that will not let the fumes, the rubbish, or the ashes come out of the pit. So it continues to circulate in the pit with the fire until it's burned up. And you can continuously feed it. Feed it. So um, I thought in my, in my research that it was a very handy machine. Uh, guys, I'm not asking y'all to, but I'm just telling you this machine I think would be a, a, an asset to the city in what it does with this, this stuff we got over here. You know, so garbage. that's the, yeah, the, the garbage or, you know, trees or whatever. <clears throat> that's what I was here for to look up. And, and like I say, just my recommendation, I think that ought to go with also maybe a, a burn permit. We got that. You know, I'm, I'm talking that. about for what I'm saying is for citizens, because a lot of times, you know, just like with the new developments, when they come in and move stuff around and clear land, if they can't bring it to us to do it, they ought to be able to buy a permit so they can do it themselves. What's the cost? The cost on the two that we looked at, one was 56000 and one was, I think, 61000 And so how much is the same going to pay let me, let me read that for you, Robert. Um, FEMA pays by the cubic yard. Uh, we could... And we charge FEMA for everything, every chainsaw, every truck, every backhoe, if we're working on debris removal. We're keeping up with it. And you can do, you can do your own research. But I got right here an email. Um, okay, this is another email. Dear Henry Cotton, and it's from Louisiana, PA. Um, um, Dear Henry Cotton, this notification serves to inform you that the recently submitted request for public assistance, the RPA that we submitted, uh, has been approved. A representative of the Governor's Office of Homeland Security, this is dated on the 5th, Monday. <clears throat> Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness, GOSEP, will be in contact with you in the near future to discuss the next steps in the process. Um, the, in fact, all, now we don't have debris removal, but we have public, this is public assistance. Now, public assistance pays roughly 75% of cost, but the cost is not based on, uh, it's based on FEMA's cost. What do they pay for a chainsaw? What do they pay for? And believe me, it's a lot more than, than my estimation is that we can pay for the machine. Use a disaster to pay for the machine. We got that much tonnage. Now, $6 a cubic yard. Um, just do your research. Go look up, uh, do FEMA debris removal appeal. You'll see companies that overcharge and charge um, $150 or $200 to cut a tree limb. Okay, do your research, and you'll see that we can just Google it. I mean, I, I, don't create, I didn't create Google. 
and I didn't create the facts. But Yeah. Yeah. We naturally we are responsible. But this is a lease. It's a lease, and it's like a five-year lease where we can send it back next year. Okay. I I got away from the purchase thing and went to lease lease purchases. But if we don't get it, we don't have a le we don't have a license to dispose of that and just let it rot out there. We can't do that. We've got to get rid of it, and FEMA will pay us to do it. Now, I, 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 let me share this with you, Robert. You want to take that? Yeah. Let's get a motion. Okay, uh, we got those numbers. I'll get them to you. I'll email them to you. Uh, and I'm going to email you the, the machine, too, and send you some videos of the machine. I think it's a heck of an idea. But, you know, I'm a school of carte blanche. I'd like to know how much it's going to cost the city. A paper. And let's buy it and be through with it. Yeah, be through with it. Okay. All right. But we've got to dispose of this, this debris. And, and that's the only only reasonable. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Locke. Thank you. Okay, I guess that's it. Um, item 17. Now, what do we decide to table that until next week, right? Okay. And uh, item 17. Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Mr. Locke, moved to adjourn. Second by Mr. Shaw. And the discussion. All in favor? Meetings adjourned. Jesus have mercy. Oh, that's rough. Golly. Thin teeth. What's the matter, Mr. Brady? Mr. Brady, give me your email address. Larry, give me your email address. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Yes, sir. You can't do that. Damn. Yeah, that's why we did the graveyard. We stopped picking up stuff and did the graveyard. I hadn't bothered you. They never did come by and cut my truck. You didn't cut it? Oh, he may have cut the tips off of it, but I mean, they ain't cut that much off of it. I'm sorry, tomorrow. And you can still see right there for the stop sign. You have to get out of here. You get a bunch of them there. Then it's one just about 200.